This is a tutorial on how to fly a full re-entry and landing in the space shuttle using X-Plane 9. X-Plane 9 comes with a uh, pre-programmed scenario to uh, allow you to do a full re-entry into Edwards Air Force Base. It uses these two uh, display screens. This is a, um, an energy management display and this is a, a navigation display here. Uh, the problem is that there's no way to, uh, to change these two screens to reference anything other than Edwards Air Force Base. So I'm going to show you to do a re-entry in a way where we completely ignore these two screens. And uh, once you learn how to do it the way that I'm going to show you, you'll be able to fly a full re-entry into uh, any airport in the world that you want. So uh, the way we'll start is to uh, put the orbiter on the opposite side of the globe from our destination airport. So uh, just go up to Planet Map. Uh, today we're going to go into the shuttle landing facility in Florida. So I just uh, go ahead and rotate the globe around. And uh, we'll go ahead and drop into Malaysia. Okay, next we'll um, go ahead and enter the four letter ICO identifier for our destination airport. In this case it's KTTS. Okay, so the GPS is telling us that we're 8,462 miles from our destination and it's on a magnetic heading of 0 to 7 degrees. So uh, we'll go up to location, local map, we'll enter 027 into the heading. For altitude we'll select 700,000 feet. And for speed just go ahead and click on the fifth digit a couple of times. Um, X-Plane won't allow you to enter a value that's greater than the orbital velocity for um, whatever altitude you've selected. So just clicking that a couple of times will max it out. Go ahead and hit X and we are in orbit. First thing to do, or actually the next thing to do is um, go ahead and make sure you bring the gear up and uh, take the parking brake off. Don't want to be doing a re-entry with the gear down. So let's go ahead and take a look around. So we're currently in a symmetrical orbit at uh, 700,000 feet, which is about 115 nautical miles. So um, our next um, task is to go ahead and do a, a deorbit burn. Now X-Plane doesn't uh, have functioning ohms thrusters on the space shuttle, so there's two other ways to do a deorbit burn. We can uh, just come up to the maneuvering thrusters and uh, just hold the maneuvering thrusters and just keep holding it until you've uh, subtracted a couple hundred knots off of your velocity. Easier way to do it is just to go back up to local map and um, where, where the speed is on that screen just uh, take 200 knots or so off of that and that will just immediately subtract uh, that amount off of your velocity and uh, you'll begin descending out of orbit. So we want to do that when we're 8,000 miles from our destination. We're currently 8,130 miles out and that's, that's ticking off pretty quickly. So we'll just wait until we're uh, 8,000 miles out and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, start our deorbit. Okay, we're 8,020 miles out, so we'll go ahead and do it now. Local map, come up to speed, and just uh, subtract 200 knots. Actually, let's, uh, let's make it 180 knots. Anything between 150 and 250 knots is acceptable. You can experiment with, with different values. Uh, it'll definitely start dropping you out of orbit. So this is the vertical speed indicator right here and you can see that it's already indicating that we're in a, a slight descent and it's going to continue to increase until uh, we hit the upper atmosphere. So uh, let's go ahead and review the instruments that uh, we're going to be relying on. Uh, to the far left here where it says alpha is your angle of attack indicator. Just to the right of that is your indicated airspeed in knots. That's currently indicating zero because we're still in orbit. Um, down below that 
is your uh, Mach meter, essentially giving you your true airspeed in Mach. Uh, obviously an attitude indicator. This is your vertical speed indicator, and that's calibrated in feet per second. This is your altitude strip here. Where it says DEC, underneath that is your, uh, this is your deceleration rate. And uh, that's calibrated in feet per second square. Now, uh, the speed of sound is uh, not a linear measure of speed. The, the speed of uh, sound changes with altitude. The higher you get, the slower the speed of sound. For our purposes, we can just go ahead and assume the uh, speed of sound to be 1,000 feet per second. So when this instrument, for example, is indicating that we're decelerating at 25 feet per second squared, we can just do the math and, and figure out that we'll bleed off one Mach number in about 40 seconds. So this is a very useful uh, reference to have. Here we got a G meter, and we'll never do more than three Gs. Uh, this real space shuttle never does more than three Gs. Over here where you have your heading strip, there's a little diamond symbol uh, right here which depicts your uh, magnetic course. Right now it's showing about 030. And then, of course, your GPS is indicating the uh, distance from your destination airport in nautical miles. And it also shows the uh, magnetic heading uh, to the airport. So um, the way we're going to do this is we're going to be using a series of checkpoints. Obviously, our goal is to do a dead stick landing over uh, at our destination airport. In order to do that, we need to be directly over the airport, or actually preferably just off the departure end of, uh, of our airport at about 70 to 80,000 feet and uh, with a velocity of about Mach 1.5 or so. In order to be in that position, when we're 50 miles out, uh, we want to be at Mach 4. When we're 100 miles out, we want to be at Mach 6. When we're 300 miles out, we want to be between uh, Mach 10 and 11. When we're 1,000 miles out, we want to be uh, between Mach 18 and 20. And when we're 2,000 miles out, we want to be uh, about Mach 25. So when we're at or approaching these checkpoints, we're, we're checking our, our velocity and uh, determining if we're, we're too fast or too slow, and then we'll, we'll correct accordingly. So the first question that you're probably asking is you're saying, okay, great, you're telling me what speed I need to be at when I'm at a certain distance to the airport, but what altitude should I be at? Well, what we're going to do for that is we're going to be using the uh, indicated airspeed to tell us if we're too high or too low for uh, what, whatever position we are at in the reentry. So for the uh, majority of the reentry, we're going to be having values of between 100 and 200 knots of indicated airspeed. And we're going to be trying to keep it basically in the middle of that at about 150 knots. So when it approaches the high end, when we're getting close to 200 knots, we know that we're too low for where we are on the reentry. We're, we're too low, we're in thick air, and that's why we're getting a higher indicated airspeed. And uh, so we'll just go ahead and correct for that. We'll shallow our bank angle and reduce our rate of descent and vice versa when when it's approaching say a hundred knots uh, that means we're too high we're in too thin of air and we need to get back down lower and to do that we'll, we'll increase our bank angle and uh, that will help to uh, increase our rate of descent so that's the game plan um, I'm going to demonstrate that as we go along right now we've uh, We've completed our deorbit burn, we're dropping out of orbit, but there's really nothing for us to do at this point until we actually hit the upper atmosphere. That will happen when we're down to 396,000 feet and we'll be about 4,000 miles from our destination. So um, at this point, you just, just basically enjoy the view. We're just uh, coming up on southern Japan. I'll go ahead and uh, stop recording here and when we get to the point where we're just about to enter the atmosphere. I'll go ahead and start recording again and uh, explain a few things that uh, we need to do at that point. Okay, so we'll stop right here.
Okay, so we're back here and we're just about ready to enter the atmosphere. We're currently at 401,000 feet and uh, we're descending at almost 560 feet per second. Indicated airspeed is still at zero. It's going to start coming alive here shortly. And there it is. It just started ticking up. And we're showing uh, about five, six knots right now. That's going to continue to steadily increase. We've got a, a nose up attitude of about 40 degrees and we're wings level. So at this point in the approach we really only have one goal and that's to just shallow out our uh, descent. Uh, we're currently at 565 feet per second descent rate. We want to actually level that out to zero or actually uh, we'll end up doing a slight climb uh, maybe 100 feet per second or so, not nothing crazy, but um, the normal, uh, the actual space shuttle does uh, go into a climb shortly after after leveling out. That's the normal profile for it. It's going to take a while before that happens. Though we're currently at 366,000 feet, and uh, we'll probably descend down to about 240,000 feet before we've actually leveled out. So. Uh, this is a very easy part of the re-entry. You've got one task. Just keep the wings level um, and keep the nose up about 40 degrees and we will level out. So uh, a full re-entry takes about 50 minutes and I want to kind of keep this video uh, as short as possible. Uh, it's still going to be pretty long but I want to show you guys everything that that you need to see. So we'll go ahead and uh, stop recording here and uh, we'll pick it up once we've uh, once we've gotten level, and then uh, once after we've leveled out, we'll start our our S turns, and uh, we'll show you what that's all about. So we'll pick it up later. Okay, so here we are. We just about leveled out. We're at uh, 248,000 feet, and we're just now level, and just actually starting a slight climb. We're 2,640 miles out from our destination. We're on course and we're indicating uh, Mach 26.9. So we're going to go ahead and start our first turn. We'll go ahead and, and start banking to the right. And uh, we'll start it out about uh, 45 degrees or so. You got to use a lot of rudder when you're, you're at such high angles of attack. When you start uh, rolling to the right, you want to use quite a bit of rudder. And we'll keep about 40 40 to 45 degrees angle of attack here. So uh, we're 2,480 miles out. Our first checkpoint is 2,000 miles and we want to be at Mach 25. We're currently at 26.8. And I'm indicating only 70 knots of uh, indicated airspeed. So uh, we definitely want to uh, descend lower. And I'm going to go ahead and increase my bank angle to 60 degrees. That's going to start increasing our descent rate. Currently in a slight climb, actually. So we're going to go ahead and stop that and uh, start heading down. Take a look around here. We're currently over uh, northwestern Canada. I'm not sure how um, how visible a lot of these displays are going to be in the in the video, so I'm going to be calling out quite a bit of uh, altitude and airspeed information as we go along. But right now we're at uh, 2,200 miles out, and we're at uh, Mach 26.9 actually. Increasing my bank angle by about 70 degrees. I want to start heading down.
Okay, so we're 2,000 miles out. We're at Mach 26.6, so I'm a little faster already than I said that I want to be. So that's not a problem. We're just going to go ahead and correct. We're going to keep a, a very steep uh, bank angle and a high angle of attack. I'm currently at about 48 degrees of angle of attack and probably doing uh, 75 degrees of bank angle. That's uh, causing me to descend, uh, my descent rate to increase. I'm currently at 180 feet per second descent rate, and that's increasing. So we're going to start getting back down into uh, some thicker air pretty quickly here. Our next checkpoint is 1,000 miles out. We want to be between Mach 18 and Mach 20. Let's kind of take a look around here. Let me go ahead and change the uh, time of day to midday so we can kind of see a little bit better what's going on. Okay, we just passed through Mach 25 right now and we're 1,700 miles out. Okay, I'm currently descending at 470 feet per second, which is a pretty fast descent rate. So I'm going to go ahead and start shallowing my bank angle. I don't want to get any crazy descent rates right now. And we're at uh, 226,000 feet. And the airspeed's picking up. We're at 115 knots right now indicated. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and decrease my bank angle to about 30 degrees because I'm really slowing down a little faster than I wanted to. We're 1,400 miles out. We're at Mach 21.7, indicating 160 knots right now. I'm actually going to go ahead and level out. My course is showing that I'm tracking uh, 1, 3, 7 degrees and uh, the airport's at 1, 3, 2 degrees so I'm 5 degrees right of course. And we'll go ahead and start changing our bank angle to the other direction. I'm 1100 miles out right now at Mach 19.5. Okay, we're just coming up on 1,000 miles right now, and we're at Mach 19.3, so we're pretty much right where we want to be. I'm going to go ahead and start increasing my bank angle. 
I shallowed my bank angle because I was I thought I was getting a little too slow, but now we're right on track, so we're now going to go back to more of a normal bank angle and normal angle of attack of about 40 degrees. Um, currently only indicating about 105 knots of airspeed, so I'm, I'm really too high for where I want to be at this point in the approach, so we're going to go ahead and increase our bank angle a little bit more and start dropping down lower. I'm at uh, 217,000 feet right now. So our next major checkpoint is when we're uh, 300 miles out. We want to be at uh, between Mach 10 and 11. Currently uh, 850 miles out, we're at Mach 18.5. Okay, and I've got my descent rate up to 420 feet per second now, so I'm going to go ahead and start shallowing my bank angle. Airspeed's climbing up coming up on 130 knots of indicated speed. And we'll take it to 30 degrees of bank angle. Currently tracking 144 degrees airport's at uh, 138 degrees so I still need to come left to get back on course and I'm up to 185 knots of indicated airspeed right now so now I'm getting a little bit low so we're going to shallow up our descent rate Just coming up on uh, 300 feet per second. Okay, now we've got a descent rate of about 110 feet per second, so that's kind of where we want to keep it for right now, so that's good. Okay, I just wanted to reduce my indicated airspeed a little bit. It was getting a little high there, so I'm dropping back down towards uh, 160 knots of indicated speed. Currently at 168,000 feet, and we're at Mach 12.3. 390 miles out. Tracking 140 degrees, the airport's at 139 degrees, so we're essentially on course. We'll go ahead and keep banking left here and uh, pass through that heading. Okay, so we're just coming up on our 300 mile checkpoint right now. And it is right there, and we're at Mach 10.5, so we're right where we want to be. We can kind of see the uh, Florida Peninsula coming up over the horizon here.
indicating about 190 knots of indicated airspeed. We're at Mach 9.4, 9.3, and just coming up on 200 miles out now. So our next checkpoint is 100 miles. We want to be at Mach 6. I'm going to go ahead and start rotating off in the other direction now. And we're only doing uh, 1.8 G's right now, so 1.9, very gentle approach, indicating 180 knots. Okay, we're just coming up on our 100 mile checkpoint right now, shortly, 106. Okay, 100 miles and we're at Mach 6, right on the button, so we're right where we want to be. Hundred and sixteen thousand feet altitude. We're seventy miles out. Mach four point four. I'm gonna go ahead and start rotating back in the other direction again. Okay, we're 50 miles out, we're at Mach 3.1, so we're a little bit slow here. Shouldn't be a problem. Forty miles out, Mach 2.2. Airport's at 136 degrees and we're tracking 135, so we'll go ahead and just level out right here. Thirty miles out, Mach 1.9. See if we can find the runway here. Okay, there it is. It's just under the nose right there. You can see that. Okay, so we're basically over the airport now. We're at uh, Mach 1.3. We're at 77,000 feet, so we're a little bit slower and a little bit lower than optimal, but uh, it won't be a problem. We'll just Keep that in mind as we're positioning ourselves on the uh, on the turn. At this point, I mean, we've pretty much got the runway made. We just need to uh, just do a dead stick landing, and this is all just sort of by feel. 
So you got the runway in sight right there. And we're at Mach 1.2. So now we've basically transitioned from you know the re-entry phase to uh, a point where we've got a real flying airplane. It's going to fly like a normal airplane, and we're going to let the air indicated airspeed uh, continue to accelerate. We're at 210 knots right now. We'll actually be at 300 to 320 knots of uh, indicated airspeed when we're on uh, final. Check where we are. Fifty two thousand feet. Once we're on final, we want to be at about a seventeen to eighteen degree uh, glide path and um, we'll use the heads-up display to kind of judge that. Uh, we're just passing through Mach 1 right now. When we do that, we want to make sure you retrim the airplane. Um, when you go subsonic, the aerodynamic center of pressure on the wing moves forward and it causes a pitch-up moment, so go ahead and retrim for that. Coming in a little tighter than we normally would because we were just a little bit low and a little bit slow. So uh, we're going to keep this in a little, little tight. So this is all just sort of seat of the pants kind of stuff, just basic judgment. Once we get on final, we'll be able to judge what our, our required uh, glide path is. We'll use the uh, heads-up display for that. We'll get that uh, into view here shortly. Currently indicating 282 knots. We're going to let that continue to increase. Okay, there's the runway there. Bring this thing around a little bit better here. Okay. So ideally, we want about a 17 degree glide path, and, and we're pretty much right on there, maybe a little bit, a little bit steeper than normal. So we'll go ahead and put the air brake on about one half. We've uh, obviously got the runway made at this point, so we're just sort of fine tuning everything with the air brake so that we get the wheels down somewhere in the touchdown zone. Three hundred and eight knots.
that's it. That's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and hit the replay thing and take a look at that landing. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you guys. You don't need uh, those energy management displays that they have for the Edwards approach. You can do this all by just sort of you know basic feel and basic judgment, just using those checkpoints that I showed you. And uh, it's really not that hard at all. Um, you know, just practice it a few times. I'm sure it'll take you a couple of times before you get it all down. But uh, once you do, it's it's really pretty simple. I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I didn't make the airport. Um, and it's just fun to fly to you know all the different airports uh, all over the world, um, just checking out all the different scenery from from high altitude and whatever. So it's really cool. Um, I hope this was helpful to you guys. If uh, you have any questions or or uh, whatever, go ahead and leave a comment, and I'll try to get back to you. And uh, that's that's it. Thanks.